This is a video from one of our design and configure example projects using DriveWorks Solo. This particular one shows you how you can configure a custom wheelchair. All the design rules and know-how for designing the chairs have been set up in the project and are driven by the requirements and values entered on the forms. This example project, along with several others, is available to download from the DriveWorks Solo website. Once we have downloaded and installed the project, we can run a new specification by clicking the button at the top of the Drivebox Solo task pane. This first form allows us to provide some customer information. In this example, we have set up fields for company name, company contact, contact address and salesperson. I can then select the currency required for this specification from the drop down list. All the information used in this form will be required later on, so we have created a number of alerts and warning messages to ensure all the information is valid and to ensure that all the text boxes have been completed. When information is missing, an alert is displayed at the bottom of the screen. This indicates that the contact name has not been filled out. As soon as I type, you'll notice that the error message will disappear and the next button will be enabled. We have also created a rule in this project that ensures no invalid characters are used. As this information will be used to create the file name for the project, it is important that no invalid characters are entered, as this would result in the models not being saved. So the warnings that appear ensure that all the information entered is in the correct format. Moving on to the next form, we can now start to create our wheelchair. We will start by selecting some dimensions. We can choose our back height, and again these text boxes have alerts and guidance linked to them to ensure that the number entered here is a valid value. So the warning message indicates that the back height needs to be between 450 and 600. By entering a value into this, the error message disappears, and we can move on to the thigh length, and finally our shin length. We can now choose our cushion material whether we would like an additional cushion to support our back and whether or not we want push handles on the wheelchair. Finally, we can choose the frame colour. This drop down box is populated from a table created in Drivebook Solo. And as we change the colour, the colour of the field title changes as well, allowing us to actually see a swatch of the colour selected. We're then provided with an indicative price so far. Now we can pick the type of caster wheels we would like. As we make our selection, the image is updated. DriveWorks Solo supports the use of transparent images. This means that images can be layered on top of the other images and other controls, and that the overall look and feel of the form can be much more professional and visually appealing. I'm going to select the number of spokes that we require on the wheel and move on. The final form presents us with a summary of the cost of each item that we have selected. If we want to go back and make some changes, we can simply check the option to change our design and click next to go back and update our design. All the calculations will be updated in the background and our summary will then update accordingly. At this point, we can preview the model before finishing our specification. By selecting preview, DriveWorks Solo will generate the model. Doing so will apply temporary file names to a copy of the master model and drive the dimensions and properties of the model to the values that we have chosen in our forms. As the model is generated, the model generation window displays every action the DriveWorks Solo has taken and provides a running commentary on what is happening. Our wheelchair is now complete. We can now see the selections we made on the model. The frame color is purple, the amount of spokes that we have specified has been driven, the grey cotton seat has been applied, and there is no back cushion. However, if we want to make any amendments, we can click on the checkbox and click next to edit some of the values. I'm going to amend the shin length and click preview again. Click in preview will update the model, and in this example, the shin length will change. As well as previewing the model, we can also preview the drawings. 
Next to the Model Preview button, we have a Drawing Preview button. By selecting this option, Drybook Solo will generate a preview of the general arrangement drawing that we have for this wheelchair project. Again, temporary file names are allocated to these drawings, and as we go through, you'll notice that the drawings will rescale and resize in the appropriate positions. All of this is based on the rules that we have set up for this particular project. The borders have been populated with the information that was entered on the form, such as the company name, the company contact, their address, the colour of the frame, the material of the cushion, and the date at which the specification was complete. We have also set up the project to include a drawing number, and this has been driven into all the sheets. On the first sheet, the annotations and dimensions have been driven to a position so that they are not overlapping. The balloons have also been driven, and the bill of materials has been populated with a quantity, description, part number, and item number. As well as previewing the models and drawings, we can also view the documents created for this project. In this example, we have a covering letter, a quotation, and a bill of materials, which is a replica of the bill of materials on the drawing. There is also a document list in all the specification values used in the project. So if at a later date you wanted to review the information entered for this specification, you can simply view the specification values document and ensure that all the information is correct. Drybox Solo also generates a series of reports automatically for every specification run. This provides a detailed audit trail of the steps and actions performed by Drybox Solo to generate the outputs. For example, if I open one of these reports, we can see that dimensions and custom properties have been driven. Once we're happy with our design, we can complete the project. At this point, we're presented with a finished dialogue, where we can choose whether to save the models, save the drawings, generate the documents, and whether or not to launch Windows Explorer when Drybook Solo has finished generating all the models. As Drybook Solo generates the files, you can see that the model geometry is rebuilt based on the requirements that we have entered. The model is then saved to the location that we have specified in the rules when we set up the project. Once the model is complete, Drybook Solo will finalise the drawings rescaling and resizing them into the correct position and then finally Windows Explorer will display so that we can open and review the outputs created. In the rules set up for this particular project we have created separate folders for the documents, the drawings and the models. Inside our Documents folder, we have all our documents. Inside our Drawings folder, we have our three drawings. And inside our Models folder, we have our model set. That brings us to the end of our video. If you have any questions, please contact your SolarWorks DriveWorks reseller or contact us at support at driveworkssolo.com.